Hey, 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 how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Yeah. Hello, 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 and good evening. Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. What have you been up to this evening? Oh my goodness, it's almost bedtime for me, and I just kind of wanted to touch base with you guys before heading off to bed. Now, affirmation for today. Although, it's like at the end of the day, so it'll be your affirmation for today and tomorrow. You can go to bed kind of singing this. I shine, I shine, I shine. Oh yes, I choose to shine. And again, I shine, I shine, I shine. Oh yes, I choose to shine. And it's a choice, guys. It is a choice whether you choose to shine, whether you choose to hide your light, whether you choose to tell yourself that you can't, whether you choose to get everything that you desire, whatever, whatever, whatever. It's your choice. Success is your choice. Success is your decision. Are you willing to do what it takes to get it? Or are you going to let some certain things get in the way? And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about, and guys, yes is an amen. This is the church of RNK. So... Say your yeses and amens. Um, tell me where you're streaming in from. Tell me where you're into or whatever. I don't know. I want to. I want to hear from you. Ultimately, I want to hear from you. That's that's all. <laughs> okay. This evening, I've been out there doing one of those things that I keep resisting. I keep resisting. Is this singing thing that I do? You know, it's one of the points of greatest resistance in my life. Literally, I've been trying to put this album together for like this is good. Yeah. Okay. So I get it. I get it. I get how we can get in our own way, okay? I've been putting this album together for about, this is, the, yeah, this is the end of the second year. I'm even ashamed to say it out loud, truth be told, because I keep getting in my own way. Where are you getting in your own way? Where are you holding back from doing the thing that you say that you want to do? Uh, where are you hiding your light? You are the light of the world. Did you read the post that I wrote this morning? And if you didn't, go read it, okay? Did you read the wrong post I wrote this morning? You are the fucking light of the world, okay? You are. You get to choose whether you, sh you show us that light or you get to choose whether you're going to hide, whether you're whatever, whatever, all kinds of stories. We give ourselves all kinds of stories and reasons why we can't do what we're doing. But ultimately, it's your choice. So again, affirm with me. I shine, I shine, I shine. Oh yes, I choose to shine because it's a choice. I shine, I shine, I shine. Oh yes, I choose to shine. Okay, so seven things. Well, seven things, seven. I don't have seven fingers, so five. Seven things, five. Seven things, okay, that, that kind of make you lose your shine. Number one, what do you need to let go of? What do you need to let go of? Some of y'all are holding on to some stuff. Hello, my Susan. How are you doing? <laughs> How are you? How are you? How are you? Some of you are holding on to things that you really do need to let go of. There's certain things in your life. And you know what? I've been considering this. I've been thinking about this over the last few days. There's certain parts of my life that I probably need to let go of because I've been holding on to them for very, very long. I'm not quite going to go into detail just yet. But yes, some announcements may be made. <laughs> But this is it. And I suddenly realized that there's certain things I'm holding on to because it's safe. It feels safe. It's like some of you, a relationship you might be holding on to. Some of you, it might be, I don't know, you're holding on to a career that no longer actually makes you feel good, but it's safe. It's safe. It's safe. And so you can't shine your light whilst you're doing it, but it's safe. And so you keep doing it and you keep telling yourself one day I'll do what I need to do. Or maybe you're in the wrong business altogether. Or as I mentioned already, it's relationships. It's the things, some of the things that you're doing, some addictions you might have that are kind of holding on to you and preventing you from using that energy to do something more useful with your time. What are you holding on to? And you will know that actually this thing is not helping me. You will know that, but you'll be holding on to it because it's safe. It makes you feel okay. It makes you feel safe. It makes you feel good. It makes you feel like you have some control. And so therefore, you keep holding on to this thing. And that thing that... And for some of y'all, it's not a bad thing. So like, it's like with me, with my career, um, I could have stayed a pharmacist. It's not a bad thing, but it wasn't a good, it wasn't the best thing. That's the thing. So when you're holding on to something and you know what, I have to do this from time to time. It's like, I'm holding on to this, whatever it is in my, even in my business at times, I've had to shed stuff where it's like, okay, yeah, it's good but it's not the best and it may be keeping me from the best because I'm spending all my energy trying to make this thing work or this thing happen. And you are in that same situation. So there you are trying to shine, but you can't because you're holding on desperately to something that you need to let go of. Okay. 
It might even be, for some of y'all, it might even be your religious thing, okay? You've been um and an hiring about it for ages. I did this for um and an hiring for ages. I have to say, you know what, I went full circle. So, <laughs> so I kind of walked away from the religion and then walked back again. <laughs> when I realized, when I when I'd found my own relationship with spirit, then it's like, hey, I can go back and do whatever because I'm strong in myself, but I had to let go in order to get it back even better, okay? And some of y'all are scared of letting go of something that seems good, but it is keeping you from the best, okay? And it may, again, it may seem to be something that is pretty dang good, okay? But it is keeping you from the best, so do you, what you, as I'm talking, you already kind of know if you are that person that I'm speaking to, you already know that there is something that you're holding on to for dear life because you're worried that if you let it go, then you don't know what you're going to have. So, oh my goodness, I better just hold on tight. I'll just stay here doing the same old, same old stuff. This is me trying to, you know, share it to my profile as well. <laughs> Whilst I'm talking to y'all, basically. Um, and yeah, you're just, you, you're just kind of carrying on the same kind of cycle which isn't getting you anywhere but you keep holding on because it's safe it's not safe actually it's not safe at all it may feel safe but it's not it's keeping you bound up it's keeping you from shining and you are supposed to be the light of the world okay you were created to be the light of the world but unless you let yourself be the light of the world you won't you won't shine so as affirm with me again i shine i shine i shine oh yes i choose to shine i should get to nod in my head I do a lot of this. <laughs> it's like, I shine, I shine, I shine. Oh, yes, I choose to shine. And it is a choice. I said that already. But I need you to understand that nobody's going to come and declare you the, the light of the world. You wake up one morning and decide, you know what? Spirit said it to me once upon a time. It must still be the truth. So therefore, I'm going to keep holding on to that and just accept it as my truth rather than pretending or rather than living to beneath my capabilities. And it is your choice. It is your choice. Okay. So next thing. What is the next thing? Let's get my notes here. <laughs> I started making notes about this stuff, man. I started making notes. I'm trying to, you know, make it a bit more ordered for you. Also, I just talk off my head, which is fine. Because talking off my head is pretty good too. <laughs> but anyway, next thing is procrastination. Procrastination. Well, one, you could be procrastinating about the thing that you need to let go of. You could be procrastinating about something you know you need to be doing. So it's, you know, it's that person who, oh yes, I need to write that blog. But you know what? I can see a spider web right over there. I'm going to go and clean that spider web. When I come back, I will write that blog, okay? And then you come to sit down again. Oh, my husband or my wife or my whoever needs me right now. My parents just called. I need to take that phone call because it's absolutely life and death. I will come back to that blog later. Uh, next thing you know is a day gone by. Hours have passed, days have passed, and you're like, oh my gosh, why didn't I just do it that first time that I came across it? Now, sometimes procrastination is a good thing because it's trying to keep you from doing something that you shouldn't be doing. So this is where you're trying to let go or wait, wait. You're kind of feeling that call inside of you to let go of something, but you're holding on tight. Then maybe you start procrastinating about some of the stuff that you really shouldn't be doing, and that's fine. But most of y'all... Your procrastination is keeping you away from the thing that you want to do. It's like me with my album, for goodness sake. I was procrastinating and procrastinating. Even my producer man kept saying, come and do this thing. It's like, oh, I will. I will. Soon. But really, I was reacting in fear. I was reacting in fear. It's like, oh my gosh, what is this music thing I'm trying to do here? I'm sure my parents told me it can't work. Why do I now think I can? Let's procrastinate about it as much as possible, except I kind of paid for the thing. So it's like, are you going to get it done or not? <laughs> So I kind of I kind of put a bit of a demand on myself, but not enough of one because it's taken far too long. <laughs> this is me admitting my craziness, okay? So just kind of feel for me. <laughs> we all have our crazies, okay? We all have our crazies, but the question is, what are you doing about yours? Are you actually handling it? Like today, I recorded the last two songs. When you guys come to DM Live and some of y'all are going to come, you'll get the opportunity to get it. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm quite excited about it, actually. I'm quite excited about you guys being able to listen to this stuff. 
and let it be, um, you know, plaguing the back of your mind. So it starts to change the way you see the world, which is ultimately the kind of music that I like to put together. It's very simple stuff that anybody can just actually listen into. It's easy, easy listening. I think it is. It's more about the repetitive nature of the words. That's what I'm trying to get in your head, <laughs> basically. Anyway, guys, say hi. Say hi to me. Say hi to me. Don't just stop by and then just kind of stare at me. I, I recognize I'm kind of crazy with my blue hair. But, <laughs> but at the same time, I'd love to hear from you guys. Who are you? Who are you? Where are you streaming in from? Okay. So are you procrastinating on doing some stuff? Because that will definitely eat into your shine, okay? You won't be doing what you need to do. You won't be showing up in the way you need to show up. You'll be procrastinating. And as I said, procrastination can sometimes be a good thing. Most of the time, though, for most people, it isn't a good thing. It is them just kind of putting off doing the stuff that they need to do. Hey, Melanie, my goodness, all my peeps, man. (laughs) Loving you all. (laughs) So, yes. Where are you procrastinating? Where are you procrastinating? Where are you not doing the thing that you say that you want to do? One, is it because actually you don't want to do it really? And there's a part of you that says, I shouldn't really be doing this. Or is it that you're literally, you do desperately want to do it, but you're so scared that if you did do it, you'll fail. And so therefore you'd rather procrastinate and then tell yourself that you never really gave it your all. So it doesn't really matter basically. And that's kind of what I was doing with my music, but I've kind of just committed and it's going to come out whether it's good or bad. You can only have it basically. And I had to make that commitment to myself and you have to make that commitment to yourself as well or else it will dim your shine. You won't release the things into the world that you're here to do. And yeah, it'll just get in your way. It'll just get in your way and make you feel quite pretty for a lot of the time. Hmm. Okay, number three is jealousy. Jealousy, jealousy is something else that will dim your shine. The only reason why people feel jealous is because there's a part of you, if you're ever jealous of anybody else or you're envious of anybody else's stuff, the reason why you feel that way is because there's a part of you that thinks you can't have what they have. As if there is lack in the universe in which we live. I know that for most people that is their reality. They actually do think that there is lack. But surely, if you've been in my world for any length of time, you know that there isn't. Abundance is your birthright, not lack. Abundance. Abundance. Okay, it's your birthright, but you've got to choose it. And so, whilst you're feeling all jealous about other people or envious of their success or envious of the things that they have, for one, you don't even know enough about their story to really know the full picture. But for two, you're also telling yourself over and over again that you can't have what they have. Okay, that will dim your shine because what's the point of fighting for something you don't actually believe that you can have? So it's easier to actually be jealous of somebody else instead of actually going after everything that you desire. And I'm saying to you, you need to go after everything you desire. It is a choice. It is a choice. What is it? The best relationship you want on the planet? You can have it. You want to have a great relationship with your kids? You can have that. You want to have lots of money? You can have that. You can, and I I know I'm saying it and it's also easy peasy lemon squeezy. Yes, you can have it as long as you're willing to do what it takes to get it. Okay. And there's nothing. And I always say this to my DM peeps. The only thing that keeps us from everything that we desire is the work. Will you do the work? Or will you spend lots of time looking around, watching everybody else and seeing what they're doing, feeling jealous that they're doing stuff that you think you can't do? And if this thing keeps freezing, I do apologize. I keep getting this error on my Pages Manager app for whatever reason. Hopefully it will pass in the next update when they finally come around to updating it. But (laughs) but yes, jealousy is unnecessary. We live in a world of abundance. And if you don't believe that yet, just choose to believe it and then start looking for opportunity everywhere. You can, you can decide what your life looks like. You can create the success that you want, but yes, you have to choose it, which does mean you have to do the work. And sometimes the work, especially at the beginning, when you're quite fearful, you're not sure that that, that anything you're doing is worth it or any of that stuff. And all of that stuff is kind of plaguing the back of your mind then it's really hard to do the work. But as you stay consistent in doing the work, which actually is one of my points here, um, you will get the reward. You don't need to be jealous of anybody else. In fact, if I can exhort you to stop looking so hard at everybody else's stuff and comparing yourself to them, no. It's easy to put on a front on social media or on the internet or whatever, and it looks like everything is perfect, but you don't know the journey that somebody's been through. So there is no point in looking at them and thinking, I can't have all, well, you're not thinking I can't have what they have. You just kind of have this internal feeling of, Ugh, why can't I get that? <laughs> you can. You can get that. You don't need to be jealous of anybody. Nobody needs to be jealous of you. Abundance is your birthright. Just get on with getting what you want, okay? I know I say it so simply, and I'm not saying that it will always be easy for all of y'all, 
But I am saying that, well, if you never start, it will never even happen. So, <laughs> so you may as well make a start. If you're going to be spending all that energy feeling jealous of somebody else, you may as well <laughs> spend that energy become choosing who you choose to be, choosing, choosing to do the work. Okay. That's number three. Number four is guilt. Guilt is one of those things that just eats you up inside. In fact, we have to affirm before we carry on into guilt. I shine, I shine, I shine. Oh yes. I choose to shine. And again, I shine, I shine, I shine. Oh yes. I choose to shine. Okay. 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 So guilt is another thing that will dim your shine. Guilt and oh, parents are predisposed to guilt. <laughs> There's always a reason why, we, why we'll feel guilty if we let ourselves. You don't have to let yourself. Again, most of these things are choice. Basically, you can choose to not feel guilty about anything because it is a completely one of those useless emotions in my mind. Frankly, I'm not sure that there's ever a use for it, okay? Maybe you feel it for a second and then you go and apologize for something you've actually done wrong. But apart from that, and that's only for a second. What's the point? What is the point of feeling guilty about anything? Even if you have already made a mistake, you're better off just going to rectify the mistake than to feel sit there feeling guilty about it. The guilt gets you nowhere, it gets you nothing thing what's the point <laughs> okay so choose instead to instead of feeling guilty about stuff it doesn't it doesn't help and for some of y'all you, your guilt is actually it's not actually legitimate at all you will feel guilty about things that you shouldn't really be feeling guilty about at all you feel guilty about maybe the way you treated your parents or the way you or the fact that you were never the, the the child that they wanted you to be or something, 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 something. And all of that will just get in the way of you because there's some, there's, there's illeg illegitimate guilt. Guilt? Is that a thing? I don't know. Where you are feeling guilty for when you look at it logically, there is absolutely no reason for it. But yet you feel it. This can happen to spirit-driven entrepreneurial leaders, definitely, because there's always something that somebody can make you feel guilty about. You're not doing this. You didn't do this other duty that you're supposed to do. And you didn't do the other thing. And you didn't give, give your 10% this week. Oh, my goodness. And you didn't do this. And you didn't do the other. And next thing you know, you're guilt-ridden. My goodness. At this point, you definitely need Jesus. So... <laughs> Basically, except somebody's represented Jesus to you as some kind of guilt-making machine as well. So then, <laughs> or God, or not Jesus, but you know, whatever. I've, I've worked with clients who actually, the, the God that they've been told about is like a guilt, guilt putting on a kind of creature. <laughs> Ultimately, it's like, you know, we sometimes give God the, the characteristics of the devil. And we say, that's God. And it's like, seriously? And so people are operating in guilt and horribleness. And it's just... Yeah, it's a horrible thing and it's not legitimate, but they've convinced themselves that it is. And so it's, or you may have convinced yourself that it is. And then it's really difficult to break free of that. That will dim your shine. You have to choose not to give in to the guilt. You choose not to, to see, see what you can do something about, do something about it. The other stuff, it's completely pointless. So the same way you talk to yourself into feeling guilty, because honey, you did, you talk to yourself into feeling guilty. Yep. Letting go of guilt is the best thing ever. Susan tells us it's a real life changer. Absolutely, honey. It is absolutely a real life changer for sure, because that bogs you down crazy. So look at it logically. If you can't do anything about it, what's the point of feeling guilty? Okay. There's just no point carrying guilt around with you any longer. Let it go. You talk to yourself into feeling guilty. Talk yourself back out of it. <laughs> okay. Choose to just refuse. Choose to refuse to feel guilty. <laughs> okay. Refuse it. It does nothing for you. You are spirit driven entrepreneurial leader with things to do on this planet. Guilt gets in the way of those things. It dims your shine. Affirm with me again. I shine. I shine. I shine. Oh yes. I choose to shine. It's a choice. <laughs> okay. Next, shame. Oh, it's kind of the, the sister to guilt, basically. <laughs> shame is another thing where actually you just feel there is something inherently wrong with you. Again, this can be a religion thing because that might be what you've been told, basically. Or something happened with your parents when you were growing up and, they, and that made you feel shameful. It made you feel in some way because, yes, if your parents, who were supposed to love you more than anything on the planet, did not love you in the way you needed to be loved, 
because they were just handling their own business. Unfortunately, there. if you're a parent right now, you know what it can sometimes feel like, where it's like, oh my goodness, when did I stop being a child and now I'm supposed to be somebody's parent? Are you sure? <laughs> Basically, so they did the best that they know how to do, which is not an excuse them. But at the same time, if you are, you will, you feel this kind of crazy shame inside of you about who you are as a person. And so, of course, how can you shine? Because you don't think there's anything in there to shine, okay? So you're hiding. Yeah, you might have even got some success in doing something that now is quite familiar to you, quite safe. But when it comes to doing the real work you want to do, there's just something inside of you that says you are not good enough. It's not the truth. Again, it is something that you talked yourself into. It may not have been your fault at the start, and it's not your fault now, but it, uh, it, what I need you to understand is that you can do something about it. You can talk your way out of it. One, you can start talking yourself into the fact that you are worthy. There is nothing wrong with you. You always make great decisions. You are able to turn your life around and do all the things that you want to do. And it's okay. You're worthy. You're loved. You love just the way you are, man. Okay. You need to really start to see that and to start with is a choice to choose to look for that rather than to choose to look for evidence that there's something wrong with you. There is nothing wrong with you. You were made just great. Exactly the way you are. Fearfully, wonderfully made, my honey. Okay. So you can choose to believe that and start to look for evidence of the good. Okay. It will be a slowish process. Some of you will have an, a miraculous change. If you worked with me, it would help. Basically, you'll have a bit of a miraculous change where you start to feel really good about yourself really, really quickly. But for some of y'all, it will be an ongoing kind of work stuff out. So remember me going and having a whole day with one of my coaches, actually, where I just a whole day working out some of my crazy shame stuff, guilt stuff, unforgiveness stuff, just really handling all of that and coming out of that like a new woman, <laughs> okay? And some of y'all will need something like that where you get somebody to assist you in moving forward, okay? Don't try always, it's like I just had a conversation with um, someone right now about the fact that she's very strong, she stands up for everybody else, she, you know, she can tell everybody else what they need to do, but then when it comes to her own stuff, it's just like she's just blinded, she can't really figure it out. And that's the thing about strong people, you're strong for everybody else. You don't always see what is going on with you. You need an objective outside voice to do for you what you do for everybody else, okay? So this is the thing. It's when it comes to things like shame, sometimes you don't even recognize that you're operating from it because you've always operated from it. You think everybody else is exactly the same as you. You think you are the same. You've always felt a little bit crazily odd, but you still think that generally everybody's the same as you. It's just like when I coming to understanding about like the way I was brought up and figuring out that some of my story was just really weird. <laughs> Ultimately, I, th I just thought it was normal because that's all I'd ever known. I thought it was normal. I thought everybody had gone through the same stuff. And when people were trying to tell me there's something wrong with this picture, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really get it. Okay. I wouldn't really get it at all. But as I got older and wiser and started, you know, listening, actually listening to spirit speaking, <laughs> then I started to realize, no, it may seem normal to you, but it's not normal, okay? It's not normal to have been brought up in this certain way, to have gone through certain things. You do need to sort it. You do need, one, to choose a different path because it has to be a choice to, to be healed. It is a choice to be healed. It's not going to happen while you're not paying attention. Everything happens as you deliberately choose for it to happen. But you need to first and foremost get at some awareness that there is something wrong. The way you see yourself, it isn't right. For some of y'all, you're, you're even listening to me and thinking you're completely perfect. But then you don't even know that you're operating from shame, but you just know that you can't quite seem to break through to the next level for you. Because there's just stuff in your way and you don't even see it. That's the problem. You just know you're stuck. Are you going to do something about it? It's up to you. So shame is another thing that will just kind of eat you up inside. If you do feel what I've described already, then start to deliberately choose again to, to choose something else, okay? If you don't even know yet, but you just know there's some kind of block in you, then it may be shame, it may be something else, but do recognize the fact that you are stifled. You are stuck at one level when you could be at level 10. Choose to go out and find support, even if you feel absolutely perfect you don't need to be broken in order to go to the next level. Okay. You don't need to wait. <laughs> okay. Anyway, next,
next one is number six here is fear of punishment. I'm going quite quick today. I think it's because I'm slightly tired. Okay. Fear of punishment. I intended to do this actually whilst I was driving off, off to my producers, but I suddenly realized that the, uh, daylight saving or whatever it is meant that by the time I was going off to the producer it was dark I'd intended to do it and I was like yeah I could talk to you guys in the dark but it might not be well appreciated so no I shan't do that <laughs> anyway fear of punishment is another thing and this is particularly for spirit driven people okay because if you were brought up like I was brought up catholic and that comes with a whole lot of fear of punishment, that's for sure. Okay, a lot of, oh my gosh, all the things that, you know, you could get punished for and all the penances you need to do this and do that and the other. I'm not saying it's a bad thing altogether, but I am saying it does come with a lot of stuff, basically, especially if you take it really seriously, which I did, because I have always wanted and longed for more of God. So it's like whatever path I can find. I used to be with that little girl that would be reading all the catechisms and all of that kind of stuff to really see if I can find God in the words or whatever it is, because I just wanted something, some kind of intimacy with spirit there. So for me, it was literal. So the, the whole fear of punishment was a real thing. You're so careful about what you said. You're so careful about what you did. So careful about whether you hummed a worldly song or not. And all of that stuff because you're so worried that God is just watching out, waiting for you to make a mistake. And that whole, what would Jesus do, was a really horrible thing because they hoped that they, you'd, 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 he'd catch you doing something bad. And then, oh my gosh, he'd punish you for all eternity. And this and that and the other. And it's just like, oh. And you might listen to me and think I'm a bit exaggerated, but the truth of the matter is, again, I've worked with a few clients, actually, who have felt this way, too. Okay, some of them have found the courage to walk away from an abusive um, religious um, circumstance or situation. Others haven't. Others have thought, again, if you don't know what you don't know, have thought that that's normal. That is the way it has to be. And it's just like, no, it, it doesn't. Although for me as well, you, that's what I thought. I thought that was the way it had to be. I thought that was the way everybody did it. And, and definitely God was this vengeful judge waiting to cast me into hell in two seconds flat and all that stuff. And it's like, yeah, thankfully I've, I've just kind of let go of that stuff. But if you don't know that you can... That's interesting. If you haven't read the book, The Shack, and you're suffering from this, you should read The Shack, okay? Get past the first few chapters, but it's an amazing, amazing book. If you haven't read it, read it. That will definitely, well, at least for me, it was a very life-changing book. It might really change your life as well if you read it and recognize just how, how loved you are, okay? There is no, there's no fear and love all in the same place. No, they're opposite sides. They don't, one does not exist where the other does, ultimately. So choose the love side. Do you think that would be nicer? I think that would be nicer, don't you? Choose the love side. If it doesn't feel like love, doesn't look like love, doesn't speak like love, then it's not love. Okay? Okay, and if it's not love, it's, it's probably not spirit. It's not God. I know. I know. For some of you all, that might be very difficult to actually even understand because if you've been in a particular religious way of thinking, then... In fact, I still remember someone saying, oh, without guilt, shame, and fear of punishment, then everybody's going to go to, work, to hell or something. It's like, really? I don't think so. I don't think so, okay? But that comes from a feeling that everybody's inherently wrong and inherently evil, and I just don't think that. I used to, but I don't anymore. Okay, okay, because I know that spirit didn't make anything bad, <laughs> okay? Okay, so, fear of punishment. Are you suffering with it? Because that will definitely get in the way. Because you're not sure whether you're allowed to go after everything you want. And in fact, you're sure that you're not. So that you don't. You just don't. You just think you're, if you tried to be ambitious, oh my gosh. <sighs> you know, spirit will be out to get you. And so there's all this fear and everything around you. Or somehow people will hate you. So for you, it might be that you, you just don't want people to dislike you. So you play small. You, you don't shine because you're worried that people will hate you or... Whatever. And it, yeah, when you start to really shine, it can feel a little bit like, oh my gosh, I'm on display. Everybody's going to hate me. And some people will hate you. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's the truth, okay? But does that mean that you want to go through your whole life living to not be hated? I don't know. Okay, well, I'm not saying go out actively to find people to hate you. But then at the same time, are you going to stifle yourself just in case somebody doesn't like you? Come on now. Come on. Come on. You're a leader. You want more. 
you want more and you definitely want to live to the whims and crazies of people around you do you do you i hope not okay so that's number six there and the final one here is a lack of consistency i did kind of mention it earlier in the procrastination i think it was if you have no consistency and today you're all up yes i'm gonna do everything and then tomorrow oh no my life is hard and my husband just took my last five quid away or something and my wife she's sick and my children they're dying or something and you know okay i don't want to belittle dying children that's just you know <laughs> that's just crazy but then at the same time there will always be an event i've had people that they always seem to be an event going on with their life why they couldn't do what they said they were going to do and just when they'd start doing stuff, there'd be some other kind of event, some other kind of negative event. There'd be always some kind of drama. And it's almost like some certain kinds of people welcome drama into their life because it helps them procrastinate and it helps them stay inconsistent. Is that even a thing? Inconsistent? Inconsistent, I think, is the right thing. And that will keep them away from everything that they desire. That will keep you away from everything you desire. If you find that your life is, seems to be one drama after the next, you have to ask yourself why this is happening to you because you are the common factor in all of these dramas okay so why is this happening to you you need to handle it honey you need to show up consistently if you are going to be the leader that impacts lots of people and makes a lot of money i don't even care whether your a lot of money is a lot less than my lots of money doesn't matter if you want more than you have currently, you have to be consistent in asking for it. And when I say asking for it, it isn't just sitting there and saying, oh, yeah, please, Spirit, just send it to me. No. When I say asking for it, I mean do the work. So that is that to me is asking for it. OK, that is asking for what you desire. You know what needs to happen in order for you to get what you desire. So do not keep doing this. Stop, start, stop, start, stop, start thing. In fact, I had to tell off a client this morning. It's like, OK, enough. You know what needs to be done. Let's get to be doing it. It doesn't matter what is happening to you. It doesn't matter what event here, there, and everywhere. Do you want the result or don't you want the result? If you want the result, you better show up every single day, regardless of what you feel like, regardless of what is happening around you, regardless of any of that stuff, okay? And this works for it. I'm not even just talking about business here. Do you want the result of a great relationship with somebody? In which case, show up every day, be your best with that person. It's like a friend of mine came this afternoon and he was like, um, how do you, I don't even know what he said, but I, I just said, look here, my goals, ultimately my main goals are to be the best wife, to be the best mother, to be the best coach. That is it. <laughs> Everything else kind of falls under all of those three. And so therefore I declare myself every single day. I am best wife. I am best mom. I am best coach. And how will I act as that person? And I start acting as that person, regardless of what I feel like. Oh, I'm sure I have my bad days. But even on my bad days, I have a base level that I refuse to go under. It's a discipline, but it's, and it's a choice. And it's possible for all of us. Okay? Possible for all of us. You can do this too. Where there's like a baseline. When you know when you're feeling really rubbish. At least you know you've done this. When you're feeling really great, you've done that. <laughs> Basically, and I get that, okay? But there must be a base level below which you will never allow yourself to fall. Because you just know that if you want what you want, that's how you get it. So whether it's a relationship, whether it's a health, the health, oh Lord. <laughs> Even the health, that becomes something as well. You need to decide what is the base level I refuse to fall beneath. And then just don't, you just don't consistently choose to always be there or more. Basically, okay, whatever that looks like for you. Health, um, I don't know, having fun even, for goodness sake, that sometimes when you become all into your work and everything, you have to have, you have to create the space to have fun or else you won't. <laughs> Basically, until one day you suddenly realize, oh my gosh, I'm all stressed out, man. <laughs> and then it's like, when last did you do anything just for you? Oh, I don't know. Well, <laughs> you have to actually schedule it into your life or else it won't happen. Okay. So what is it? So it's not just about business and all of that stuff. It's also about the rest of your life. This is about overall success where it's, everything is working nicely. Is it sex even? You want more sex, honey? Sometimes you have to schedule that thing in until it becomes a normal, normal thing for you. Okay. Or else you'll always make excuses. You'll always kind of like procrastinate about it. If that's a problem of yours, um, or you, I don't know, figure out whatever it is that you desire in your life, you can have it. Just choose to keep 
doing what you need to do on a daily basis to make it happen. This is how you don't dim your shine. Affirm with me again, because I've forgotten to sing this for a while. I shine, I shine, I shine. Oh yes, I choose to shine. I shine, I shine, I shine. Woohoo! Oh yes, I choose to shine. So shine, shine, man. So that's number seven. That's seven stuff, seven things that will dim your shine if you let them. Okay? So this is it. Invitation to all y'all. Was there something I said on the air that resonated with you? Something that particularly spoke to you? And it is time for you to up-level in a particular area of your life or particular areas of your life. And you know that you're not living to the fullness of what you expect or want. You're doing okay. So it's not, I'm not looking for broken people here, okay? I'm looking for people who know that they're leaders, who know that they're called. And you know they, well, there's something that you want to do to make happen that means something to you in any area of your life, okay? Hey, Melanie. In which case... Send me through a private message. Let's have a conversation. Let's have a conversation. Or you can actually pop over to whatever so you can see the kind of things that I help people with. Um, my list did recently because I'm suddenly realizing, man, I have so much to give. <laughs> because I shine, I shine, I shine. Oh, yes. Ooh, let's spell this right. I choose to shine. Oh, Paige's manager stopped selling me this. Oh, no. Okay, there it is. <laughs> Okay, just putting that in. Oh, no, I spelled that wrong. Yep, that's right. Um, go and have a look. See? See if it sounds like you. If, and then, yeah, fill in the form, and I'll be in touch within 24 hours. If you don't hear from me within 24 hours, it's because it's in your spam, <laughs> basically. So generally, I will be in touch with you within 24 hours. So go and um, do that, okay? So what is it that you want? What is it that you want that you're not quite getting just yet? Are you serious though? Are you serious? Are you serious? Because if you are, then I can absolutely help you. If you're just kind of hoping for a free conversation and that's kind of it, then please don't. Please don't. <laughs> Ultimately, it's just a waste of my time and yours. Ultimately, and I will tell you off. <laughs> because I'm very blunt that way. Ultimately. But come on now. If there is something that you want, you're a spirit-driven entrepreneurial leader, there's something you're struggling to get, and you're ready to actually do the work and stick with it, and push yourself beyond what you've pushed yourself so far to take guidance and actually make it work, then so, um, either go over to the page there and fill in the form on there or send me through a private message and we will have a conversation and see if we're right to work together, okay? That is the goal of the conversation, um, is to see whether we can work together, but whichever way, you will leave that conversation knowing exactly what you need to do to, to, to move forward, okay? I don't like to have conversations with people without them leaving with something, so you will leave with something, but at the same time, we'll decide whether we want to work together going forward. Okay, guys, it is time to fight for and to deliberately design the life you were born to live because you want to. I was singing that song tonight, actually. Because you want to, because you want to, because you want to, you receive. Except it's I, actually. Okay, then, loving you all. Have a great rest of your evening or night or go to bed. If you're in the UK, we all need to go to bed now, I think. And I'll speak to you guys probably tomorrow or see you on the page at some point. Send me through that private message if you want to work with me going forward. Much love. Bye.